Good morning, welcome to Abundant Life Church on this, the 13th of October 2024. Let us commit this time to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this new day and this time that we can gather together. We pray for your blessing upon us, Lord. May your presence be here to bless us, to minister to us according to our need. We thank you that you are our Father, that you watch over us and take care of us. So we commit our time to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading is taken from Psalm 70. Psalm 70. Hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, Aha, aha, turn back because of their shame. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for you saying, Help always say, The Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help, my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. The Lord bless his word to us. Let's come before him and worship him. <laughs> Thank you. 
continue to worship God with our gifts and offerings to Him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness to us, Lord, in taking care of us, providing for us, protecting us even. And we want to give our gifts and offerings to you, Lord. May you be pleased with us as we give to you. And may you continue to take care of us and bless us, Lord, according to our needs. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have our prayer meeting on Wednesday at 8.30. Do join us for that as we seek the Lord together and find His grace and His mercy. Amen. Friday, Saturday was uh, the celebration of Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, where the sins of the nation are atoned for. Uh, the blood is shed. <coughs> And so there is uh, the celebration of the forgiveness of sin. Uh, unfortunately, it's also a, not such a good anniversary because it was uh, Yom Kippur a year ago that uh, Hamas uh, began their attacks on Israel. Right? So it's a, a, the one year anniversary of that. <coughs> Today we want to continue to look at the book of Hebrews just as a sort of a reminder uh, it's page 118685 okay Hebrews uh, 1 deals with who Jesus is that he is God and Hebrew to, uh, says uh, that we must pay attention it's a warning to everyone okay that those who don't believe uh, can miss out on God's promises such as the children of Israel uh, they who didn't believe were left in the wilderness died in the wilderness but uh, Jesus uh, came to this earth for our sake to be uh, our salvation to be our savior so Jesus was fully human though he was God from heaven and for the Jews uh, they always claim Moses uh, is their ancestor because he gave them the law by which they lived by right by which all their ceremonies and festivals every aspect of Jewish culture uh, came through Moses majority of it right so they always claim Moses because he was their authority for the law uh, for all the practices they carried out but uh, here it says and in uh, Hebrews 3 uh, Jesus is greater than Moses because he is from heaven. Moses just transmitted uh, what God told him. But Jesus from heaven is the word of God, the living word of God. So they were warned against unbelief, right? But unfortunately, they persisted in their unbelief and a whole generation of them died in the wilderness right, on their way to the promised land they never entered into the promise of God right? but in uh, chapter 4 it talks about a Sabbath rest for the people of God right? a Sabbath rest God created heaven and earth on six days and on the seventh day he rested right he rested because it was complete. There was nothing more to be done. Now, creation was completed already, 100%. Uh, not 99.5 or 8 or 99.9, .9, but 100%. And that is the Sabbath rest of God. That is the rest that is in heaven. On this earth, we never experience such a thing. 
right? We can cease from labor and have a period of rest. We can go to sleep. <laughs> but even then, we're not truly at rest because we're still breathing. Our hearts are still pumping, right? Our, our bodies are still functioning, even though our brains may be sleeping at rest, in a state of rest. But we're not 100% at rest, right? Uh, our brains are at rest, so you can say that we are technically about maybe 60-70% uh, at rest. But the blood is still pumping through our uh, blood vessels, artery and veins, right? Our uh, organs still function to some extent. They may not function fully, but they do function. Uh, unlike uh, some animals that hibernate uh, and they, their metabolism drops down to a very low level, we don't hibernate. We continue to function. So, there is a rest for us in heaven. Uh, uh, the Sabbath rest of God. So we must aim for that. And uh, towards the end of uh, chapter 4, it talks about Jesus, the great high priest. The high priest that opens the way for mankind, for every person born into this world, to find, to receive forgiveness that we can enter into heaven. He is a high priest, right, who presents our sacrifices before God in heaven. And he is the great high priest because he offers his life as the living sacrifice, as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. A human priest High priests have to make a sacrifice for their own sins and uh, they have to do it every year. But Jesus, being the perfect Lamb of God, had only to die once for all. And all who believe and trust in Him uh, can live forever. So then, He is the everlasting priest of God for us, right? We don't need anyone else. There is no other name by which man can be saved under heaven. No one else. <clears throat> His salvation is complete. So we who believe are complete in Him, right? But let's look at uh, uh, verse 11 of chapter 5. <coughs> the, the heading of this passage begins with warning against falling away right and it starts in chapter 5 verse 11 but it continues on into chapter 6 yeah it's the same theme that carries on in chapter 6 but it begins in chapter 5 right after uh, talking about Jesus and his perfect priesthood intercession for us then uh, in verse 11 it says we have much to say about this but it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand in fact though by this time you ought to be teachers you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again you need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Chapter 6 and verse 1. Therefore, let us leave the elementary teachings about Christ and go on to maturity. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God. 
instruction about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. Father, we thank you for your word and we ask that you give us understanding. We submit ourselves to you that you may bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. In uh, verse 12, it talks about the elementary truths of God's word. Right? What are the elementary truths of God's word? Right? In, in uh, verse 6, it's uh, chapter 6 and verse 1. Huh? Elementary teachings about Christ. Right? And not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instructions about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. These are the elementary, basic, foundational truths of the Christian faith, of belief and trust in God. This is where it begins, right? It begins with repentance from acts that lead to death. This is foundational because if you don't know repentance, if you don't have repentance from acts of death, of sin that leads to destruction, then you cannot go on to talk about righteousness and faith. Right? Because repentance requires that you turn away. You turn away from acts that lead to death. Right? What is the foundation? Because here it talks about foundational truths. They are building a mile high or one kilometer high uh, building in uh, Saudi Arabia, right? One kilometer is not quite one mile. One mile is uh, 5,000 over feet. One kilometer is uh, 1,000 meters. <laughs> the Burj Khalifa is I think about 800 uh, meters. So they want to build something that's over 200 meters higher than the Burj Khalifa, which is at present the tallest building in the world. Right? And the Burj Khalifa is built on the sands of Dubai. And uh, it, it is a construction feat because sand is not stable. So they had to pile very deeply into the sand and they had to build a concrete platform uh, from which to build the tall building. And how high can you go? You can go as high as your foundation is firm and stable. Right? When our Twin Towers was being built, you know, they had to pour a big concrete platform. And they had to pour concrete for many, many days. Hundreds of uh, concrete lorries, uh, pre-mixed lorries, had to come and uh, pour concrete down. Uh, of course, there were piles already piled into the ground, right? Hundreds of feet into the ground, in order that you can have a building that is hundreds of feet, feet tall. Right? You know, a coconut tree is not very stable. Winds can blow them down because their roots are not very deep. Right? If you go to the seaside, you, you can often see uh, coconut trees that are leaning. And then you can see their roots, which are relatively short. Unlike some other trees that have a very deep root. Right? Coconut trees can be blown over. Deep-rooted trees, when they're blown over, you can see their roots very deep, very big. And maybe a big clod of earth also 
uh, raised up and lifted up in the roots because of the depth of the roots, the foundation of that tree. So, how good our foundation is determines how high we can go. How great our faith is in God. You know, the, there's a leaning tower of Pisa uh, in Italy, well known, leaning tower. It lent because the foundation was not strong. The ground was not stable. And so they had to, you know, pile around it and try to strengthen that foundation so that it wouldn't fall over. <laughs> uh, because it was weak, they had to go to great extents to make sure it wouldn't fall over. And so we need to make sure that our faith doesn't fall over uh, by building deep into God, into His truth. Now, repentance from acts that lead to death. Repentance from sin, because sin is acts that lead to death. And it began in the Garden of Eden. Right? When man determined that they could do without obeying God. Right? So it begins with disobedience. So we must be careful to obey. Then we will avoid acts that lead to death. We don't depend on the law, but we use it as a guide. We know that God does not like idolatry. Right? He abhors idolatry, worship of anything else other than Him. The first commandment is, you shall have no other God before Him. You shall only worship God and God alone. No other God. Nothing is to be higher than God in your life, in your worship. He is to be the highest priority in your life. What is most important to you? All of us value our lives, isn't it? Uh, we breathe in and out in order to live. Uh, if you throw somebody into a river or sea, uh, and they're struggling, if they don't know how to swim, they will struggle. Why? Because they don't want to drown. They don't want to be inside the water and stop breathing because we are not fish we cannot we cannot survive in water so we struggle to breathe uh, that is automatic in every human being we want to live we don't want to die and so that should be our attitude towards sin we don't want to sin we want to live. We want to live in God. So we need to avoid all sins. And the Bible gives us the standard of sin. Right? In Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We are all sinners. No one is without sin. You know, at some point, uh, a child learns to <laughs> lie. Huh? Oh, did you steal that? Did you take that sweet? Did you take that food? Right? You know, or whatever else. Huh? They learn to fight with, grab for things, grab for food, grab for sweets and snacks and so on. You don't have to teach a child uh, to fight, to grab, to want things for their own. Uh, <laughs> I see that in my grand grandsons. <laughs> uh, the young fellow may not be quite two years old, but he already fights with his a nearly five-year-old brother uh, to grab things, to grab food, or to grab toys, or anything else. Uh, already. 
Lesson two, he already knows how to sin, to grab, to want things for himself. He already knows how to sin. How much more we adults. Uh, who has never told a lie? <laughs> if you say you've never told a lie, you're already lying. <laughs> right? None of us is innocent of sin. Right? But in uh, Romans 6 and 23, uh, again, another verse 23, right? <clears throat> it says there, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Right? That's the result of sin by Adam and Eve and all mankind. We are all sinners the moment we are born. And only when we make God our Saviour, only when we believe in Jesus Christ as our Saviour, are we then saved. Right? That's how we receive eternal life. That's how we escape death. So the re repentance from acts that lead to death means that we turn from death to life. And we believe in the name of Jesus Christ to receive salvation. And if we believe in Him, the promise in the Word of God is eternal life. We have eternal life. That is our foundation. Now, not because we can do good things, not because we come to church, not because we tithe, we give offerings. None of those make us saved or have eternal life it is by believing in jesus christ right john three sixteen. 16 huh? for god so loved the world he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life everlasting life when we believe in jesus christ uh, for God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, <clears throat> but to save the world. Right? All, but those who don't believe stand condemned already because they have not believed in God, in the name of God's one and only Son. So when we believe, we are saved from judgment. We are saved from condemnation. Thank God for that. Because we, we cannot earn it. There's no way for us to earn it. So that is foundational. If you believe you are saved, that is your foundation. You believe in Jesus Christ, that is your foundation. And then you build on it. You build on living a righteous life. On discerning what is right and wrong. Right? That is the righteousness huh, of, uh, of God in Christ Jesus. Huh? The Holy Spirit becomes our conscience that we listen to, that we obey, to guide us to know what is right or wrong. Right? We are schooled by the Holy Spirit in that sense. To know what is right and wrong. To believe in Him. To exercise faith. Rather than fear and unbelief. Right? Then there are mentioned several different things. Huh? Of faith in God. Why faith in God? Because without faith it's impossible to please God. And if you can't please God, who are you pleasing? <laughs> Huh? You're pleasing yourself, you're pleasing the world, you're not pleasing God. So we must have faith in God, we must believe in Him, so that we can please Him. Then it goes on to instructions about baptisms. Baptism what in water, baptism in the Spirit, and so on. Laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. 
right? The foundation about eternal judgment is important because God is our judge and He has assigned Jesus to be our judge. You know, uh, <laughs> popular thinking is that, you know, we come before God and He's an old man sitting on the throne in heaven. White haired old man sitting on the throne and He judges us. Right? But that is wrong. That is anecdotal. That is a story. A fable, a fairy tale created by men. Uh, we, we think that, oh, the judge must be old, uh, white haired, you know, just like, uh, <laughs> and that's why the, uh, the old judges in England used to wear white wigs to show that they are old and wise. But that is the ways of men. Uh, God has said that He that Jesus Christ will be the judge. So the Bible tells us that Jesus will be the judge. And why? Because he has experience living as we do. So we can't, we can't say, oh, you don't know what it is like to be human. You don't know what it's like to be tempted. But Jesus was tempted just as we are in every way. And he did not yield to temptation. He did not give way to temptation. That's why we can learn from him. He was strengthened by prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And we too can be strengthened by prayer and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Not by ourselves. If we isolate ourselves, we gain no strength. Right? We gain no strength. We learn nothing by ourselves. It's in fellowship with one another, with the Holy Spirit, with the Word of God that we are strengthened in our faith to be able to please God. Then we avoid the judgment of God. We learn what is good and evil. We learn to discern between good and evil. You know, the question of what is the will of God. Uh, sometimes people wonder, you know, what is the will of God? If you are familiar with God, then you would be familiar with how He leads and guides. What is the will of God for you in every situation? The Holy Spirit within you will give you His peace to lead you and guide you. The Holy Spirit who lives in every believer <clears throat> will lead us and guide us and open the way for us even at times so that we can be pleasing to God in our lives. When it talks about eternal judgment, it talks about uh, the verdict. Right? Judgment has two parts. One is the verdict. Oh, that you are guilty. And all mankind are guilty because all have sinned and come short of God's glory, God's standard of perfection. We have all sinned, right? The other part of judgment is the condemnation, the sentencing, right? You cannot have judgment without sentencing. Otherwise, the judgment is incomplete, right? The case is incomplete. Right? You, the judge will give a judgment, but he has to follow it up with sentencing. Huh? Either he, quit, he acquits you, declares that you are innocent, or you will be sentenced. So the judgment is incomplete without the sentencing. And we who belong to God, do not face sentencing. We are not condemned with, with uh, the uh, sinners and idolaters of this world. People without God. Because we have God. When we have God, we are not condemned with the rest of this world uh, who are without God. 
Jesus is our defender. He is our, the sacrifice for our sins. And therefore, when it comes to <coughs> judgment, right, the verdict, we are declared innocent because of the blood of Jesus, because of the death of Jesus on the cross. We are declared innocent and therefore we do not face sentencing. What is the sentence? In uh, Matthew 13 and uh, verse uh, 41, uh, uh, Jesus there mentions, The Son of Man will send out His angels and they will weed out of His kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Weeping and gnashing of teeth in the fiery furnace. That is a picture of hell. A fiery furnace, a fire that doesn't go out. Where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where there will be eternal regret. That is not a place for a child of God. That is a place for those who sin and who do evil who are without God when we belong to God we receive God's eternal life in Christ Jesus right so that is foundational we are saved through Jesus and after that we can go on to do good works to serve him for his name's sake what works we start with prayer and reading His Word every day. We must spend time with God. How do we know one another? How do we become friends? We become friends when we meet every day. Now when, how do we work? We work by going to the office or wherever we work every day. It's regularity. Huh? It's a habit by a habit that we uh, develop a relationship with our work and with our colleagues much more so with our parents even right how does a child know its parents because it has grown up with them you know even uh, though I spend time with my grandchildren uh, when they when they are hurt or something else, they will always look for their father or mother. <laughs> and only if their father or mother are not there, and I try and console them, then they will turn to me. But if their father or mother are there, they will always first turn to their father or mother. Alright? Not to me, grandpa. Because only they only see grandpa once in a while. <coughs> uh, not every day. Uh, not when they're hungry, not when they need changing when they need consoling and so on and so forth and so our relationship with our heavenly father uh, should be like that of children turning to god every need every situation <clears throat> turning to god not running off on our own and getting lost <laughs> right not getting lost because God cares for us. Father, we bow before you. We acknowledge that you are our Saviour. You are our Lord. Help us, God, to fellowship with you every day. Help us to know you like we know our parents, like we know our siblings. Help us to walk with you so that we will always be pleasing to you. We will be uh, exercising our faith and trust in you every moment of every day of our lives. Help us, God, to have this foundation of repentance and then fellowship with you. Help us, God, to build our lives upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's close this service at this time. <coughs> Holy Spirit, we pray your anointing on everyone gathered here. Yes, Lord, touch every heart and life and spirit here in the name of Jesus, that they draw near to you and experience you in a real way this coming week, Lord. 
We commit our country, Malaysia, into your hands. May you bless our country, bless our government that they make wise decisions. And those decisions that are not wise, we pray that you will help them to avoid making them. We pray for our economy, we pray for every aspect of our country that you may bless our country. We thank you, Father, that you are with us. Take care of us in this coming week, Lord. Give us health, give us strength. May your angels continually surround us and help us, Lord, through every situation of our lives in this coming week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you.